Hello and welcome to Louise Singleton Creations. Today's video is a response to a question from a viewer. And the question was, is it safe to use Aquacast to make a soap dispenser? And so that is what my video will be about. I will be making a soap dispenser using Aquacast and having a little talk about that. But I'm also going to try something different which I've had in mind that I wondered if it'd work and I tried it <laughs> and it worked and I'm so happy with it so I'm very excited about the second part of today's video so if that all sounds interesting stay tuned and enjoy the video <laughs> Right, let's get straight on with it. First job is to mix up the Aquacast casting compound. I'm pouring into my large jug 137 grams of water on the weighing scales and then I press the reset button or the tear button so it goes back to zero and then I add 378 grams of the Aquacast powder. And if you haven't heard of Aquacast before, let me just explain what it is. It's a casting compound with an acrylic binder in it to give it very superior qualities over Plaster of Paris. So it may seem like Plaster of Paris when you see me measuring it out and mixing it, but the difference is the properties of the acrylic binder which has been fused into the powder. You may have seen a similar thing with two-part casting com compounds such as jesmonite or hydroflow where you purchase the powder and the fluid which is the acrylic binder and the, you mix those together and you don't use any water. The, this one is the same in its properties as those two-part casting compounds but it's been the liquid properties have been fused into the powder and so you don't need to purchase the liquid binder you just use water and that makes it a lot better for several reasons firstly it's great because you're only purchasing a powder and you don't have to have the bottle of fluid delivered as well so it reduces its carbon footprint which is very important in this day and age as we all know but on a more practical level the fact that it's mixed with water rather than the fluid that you buy when you're buying the two-part casting compounds means that it mixes up far easier the powder mixes with water much more quickly and easily and smoothly than it does with that thicker fluid which you get with jesmonite or hydrofluor but I think my most favourite thing of all about Aquacast over the two-part casting compounds is the fact that you have a longer working time. You don't have to rush. You don't have to be super speedy with every little thing you're doing because it's going to cure all of a sudden. It's not. Not like the two-part casting compounds. They do cure very quickly and you find yourself in a bit of a panic rushing. You don't have to rush with this. It's fabulous. And another benefit, which I almost forgot, is that you can add more water to make a thinner solution or less water if you want it thicker. Because the properties which are important are already in the powder. And so you're not relying on the exact amount of liquid to make it all work properly. So yeah. You can use as much or as little water as you like. And as you just saw, I added a little bit extra to make my solution thinner. And the reason for that is my mould is very detailed. There are a lot of recessed parts in there. And you do find with moulds like this that air bubbles get trapped in those little areas. And I find that if you make your solution thinner it doesn't get as many air bubbles trapped in those little hard to reach parts. So that's another bonus. I would have normally sped up that part that you've just seen, but I thought it'd be good for you to see it in real time just to see how long I took to mix it. And it didn't take long at all, really, did it? So anyway, so what I'm doing here is adding just a little bit to the mould. 
as you can see it's probably about a third full and I'm getting my fingers on the inside of the mould. You, you probably can't tell but there's a hollow part on the inside of the mould so you can squeeze it from the inside and the outside and I'm doing that a lot with it and that's the best way to make sure you don't get any bubbles trapped in those recessed parts of the mould. You can also tap it from the sides to get the bubbles to come up to the top or you can put your mould down on the table and bang your table either from the top or underneath. I quite like to bang the table underneath the mould to vibrate it and that works really well too. I'm going to speed it up now because it did take a while. Uh, you know, it's best if you can spend as long as you can tapping it and doing all of that. Uh, yeah, definitely, as, especially when you get near the top because as the mould curves round, that's the area where the bubbles will get trapped because obviously it's curving over and it's harder for the bubbles to get to the surface. It's kind of they're being stopped by that curve of the mould. And that's the area where you do get a little bit of texture there. As much as you tap it and bang the table, you will get a few tiny air bubbles there. But as I said, I added more water. And so it's a thinner solution. And the little air bubbles are far, far smaller and not as noticeable as if I'd used a thicker solution. Right, now we're onto the lid and this one is a little bit more fiddly. It's got a few areas where it's just the perfect hiding place for bubbles. There's the thread of the screw top where the pump screws onto the lid. So that's right at the bottom of the mould and that's just terrible for catching air bubbles. So that needs a lot of squeezing. And when I demould it, you'll see that there were some, um, yeah, <laughs> quite big pockets of air trapped in there even though I squeezed it it's just not a great mold to be fair for using with aquacast but it works it did work and the end result is lovely but it's designed for resin so yeah you do need to pay a lot of attention to that lidded area and there's the overhang of the mold at the top where it's got a bit of a lip and the air bubbles get caught in there too so I do use a stick to go around and kind of scrape that area to dislodge anything that's clinging to the walls of the mould. Right then I gave it about one and a half hours before demoulding and this mould was a bit of a pain to get off actually. Um, yeah <laughs> I do, I'm not showing you all of it I'm showing you the bit where I finally managed to start getting the mould off. It was a bit of a pain, I've got to say. <laughs> but anyway, once that mould came off, you can see that it's nice and smooth. No air pockets in those indentations on the main body of the... Um, soap dispenser it's just on the underside i don't know if you can see slightly rough on that bottom of the curve but it's not too bad and yeah i'm really happy with it came out very very smoothly so let's have a look at the lid right so i'm not sure if you'll be able to see but i lost some of the threading there on the screw top lid part um, it couldn't be helped it just got trapped in there and the very thin edge is also a place where I thought I might get some problems and there were a couple of bits missing but other than that it wasn't too bad Right, I left it on my warm windowsill to dry out a little bit more and later that day I took a 120 grit sanding block and I poured some water onto it and just smoothed down the base of the pot and the base of the lid. You don't have to use water actually, you can do this with dry aquacast and dry sandpaper and it does work. Uh, I just find you get a smoother result if you use it wet. OK, 
okay then, I left it 24 hours before sealing it with the Hydroflow Satin Sealer, which is also from Elichem Resins, which is where I got the Aquacast from too. So yeah, you can buy both things in the same place. And in answer to the viewer's question, is it safe for putting soap into? Uh, the answer is yes, it's safe as long as you seal it with the Hydroflow sealer. And I would give it four coats. It's the same rule as it is if you were making a vase, which would be holding water. You need to give it four coats with an hour in between each coat and that will make it completely watertight. I'm not going to show you all four coats, <laughs> but I'm just showing you the one. I'm applying it with a brush inside and out and underneath. Uh, yeah, four times with an hour in between. I do find a brush is the best thing to use for something like this so you can get into all the nooks and crannies. I did ask Elichem Resins just to make sure if it is safe to put um, soap into an Aquacast soap dispenser and they said yes as long as it's sealed it becomes chemically inert and the any chemicals that are in the Aquacast cannot seep out or leach out into the soap. So that's the answer from Elichem Resins. Right then, before I show you the soap dispenser with the pump in, let me show you a second project that I decided to do. This is another one of the jars, the same as what I've just shown you. This is a second one which I made without a lid and I'm going to use this as a little plant pot. I don't know if you can see the plant, the plastic <laughs> plants I've got just at the top of the frame there. I've got those which I really like actually. I know they're artificial and I don't normally like artificial plants, but they're quite good. The thing is the tub, the jars that they're in, they're a bit old looking now. And I thought, oh, let's make a new one for one of those little plastic artificial <laughs> plants. And so I wanted to try out an idea which I'd had. And the idea was to paint it with acrylic paint and now before I do that this has been sealed just in the same way as the other one was before so it's completely sealed and yet yeah, I've got my koala grey acrylic paint from Arteza and I'm going to completely paint the outside and you'll see what I'm going to do with it once the paint's dried. Right then, as you can see, it's all fully dried and it's time for the next step. I've got uh, another sanding block. It's 180 grit this time and I'm using it dry. And I'm just going to rub it over the sides of the pot to remove the paint on the raised parts to see what pattern I will be left with. I did experiment before doing this process by wiping away the paint while it was wet rather than having to do this sanding, but it just didn't work. It wasn't crisp enough. It was wiping away paint, which I didn't want to wipe away. So I find that this works the best and it's not as time consuming as you might think. Once you get into the flow of it and you find the best method for using the sanding block, because you do, don't you? As you carry on, you find which movements work best and I found that the long swipes from left to right did work best and also by turning it over and using the thin sides of the uh, sanding block in places that helps too but actually you know what I quite enjoyed doing this it was quite relaxing and I couldn't wait to see how it turned out when it was all brushed off right then once it was all brushed off I just sanded the underside where I'd made a bit of a mess with the paint and I gave it all a coat of the sealer just in the same way as before and yeah I really really love it you'll get to see it a bit better in a minute but I'm really happy with the results and now my mind's racing thinking oh what if I use a different coloured aquacast maybe do it in pink or something and then maybe use like a nice olive green for the paint and then, because I love pink and green together, I'd really like to try that one out next. 
So, yeah, I've got all sorts of ideas now I've discovered this and I can't wait to try something else. But, yeah, I'd love to know what you think. Let's have a closer look. Right, here it is, all sealed. And, yeah, it's kind of messing with my eyes a bit as I move it. I should have done it more slowly. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. But, yeah, I love it. What do you think? I think it looks really good. And let's put the um, artificial plant in there too. Looks good, doesn't it? I'm really pleased with that. So anyway, back to the soap dispenser. Now this pump isn't the one that came with the mould. When you buy the mould, you get, I think it was two pumps with it. I got it a long time ago, so I can't remember exactly. But they weren't quite as good as this one. I found this replacement one on Amazon and I will give you a link to it because it can be quite tricky to find one that fits. And yeah, I just cut the plastic tube down so it would fit and placed it on the top. And I think it looks great. So I've come to the end of the video and I hope that's answered a few questions for you. And don't forget, if you have any questions and it's, you know, something that I can help with, who knows, maybe it will become a video in the future. So don't forget to leave your questions in the comments. I do answer as much as I can. But sometimes it's hard to keep on top of all the comments, but I will try my best. So anyway, that's it for today and I will see you next week. Thank you for watching and bye for now.